At this time, I would like to call this meeting of the Cleveland County Board of Commissioners to order. And of course, our first board of business, uh, as always, have been our pledge of allegiance and our invitation. All commissioners are present this time. So if you would please, if you would join me in the pledge, and then remain standing for the invitation flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag. Item is our citizen recognition. I always know that one anyway. Uh, 
Ladies and gentlemen, if any of you wish to speak to the commissioners at this time, uh, if you fail to sign up, you may come up to the clerk and do so. Uh, anyone who wishes to speak for or against anything or anything about the county, you'd like to come up and register your name with the, the clerk. We'll be glad to do it. Hearing none, we'll move on to the consent agenda. First time I've ever done this, so you just bear with me one minute. Commissioner uh, Ivan A is going to be our uh, minute from our April 16th meeting. Uh, we uh, need to have any corrections or additions to those minutes at this time. Here now we we'll move down to D, which is the budget amendment in the D911 phone system. I did the budget amendment of the E91 phone system to budget two hundred four thousand four hundred thirty dollars in emergency telephone reserve fund for the purchase of an integrated voice over internet protocol E91 telephone platform. I'm gonna stop right there. I'm gonna think that's uh, they call that VIP voice in it. Okay. And that platform will be installed to work in conjunction with the current 911 database and CAD system. Price includes installation and training. These funds are restricted for use involving only P91 communication dollars. Uh, item C is a uh, budget amendment in the emergency management to accept $56,250 in federal grant funding and an appropriate 25% local match in order to provide $75,000 for the procurement of regional hazard mitigation plan that will be acceptable to FEMA. North Carolina Division of Emergency Management. Both Gaston and Lincoln County will also participate in this plan. As I understand it, our match will be $18,750. Item D is the budget amendment of social services to select services to appropriate $52,633 in social services funding for a five year capital lease on IBM computer hardware and software to be used in the administration of social services program. I understand this is already budgeted, and it's at least a purchase, and it's already in the budget. Item E is the budget amendment in the sheriff's office to accept $982 in donations to be budgeted for the use of the sheriff's canine program. Item F is the budget amendment in the landfill to accept $212 in donations to the county solid waste program to be used for the proper disposal of hazardous waste. Item G contains the link to the 2013 County Management Records and Retention and Disposition Schedule updated by the Government Records section in Raleigh. The acceptance of the 2013 schedule reflects the 2009 schedule previously adopted. Item H is due to the recent changes in the County Manager's Office. The Commissioner will not be reviewing the prioritizing the goals from the April 30th meeting tonight. This will be done at a later meeting. Uh, what I have asked due to, uh, to the events that occurred this week uh, and the workload that has been put on our clerk, I asked her if she would just send us, set that aside for one meeting, uh, email you with the compilation of all of that information, and then we'll put it on our meeting, uh, our next meeting, and what we'll do is look for the things that we can do in the short term, long term, those things that we actually need to uh, uh, thank Term that uh, Commissioner Hutchins put. I always, being us three being military, we put boots on the ground, we're going to put money on the ground to make it happen. Is that a good way of saying it? Some of them are going to have to put money on the ground. <laughs> so that is the consent agenda at this time. Would you like to have any, uh, before we approve it, any additions, deletions, uh, or other information concerning the consent agenda? Here and I'd like to have a motion to consider the to be approved. I'll make a motion to approve this. So that we have any other questions? I'll second. Now, any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Uh, I'd like to take away from uh, our next item, which is special recognition, because I'm going to turn that over to our vice chair, uh, Mr. Jason Falls, for special recognition. We're honored to do this again this year. Uh, we've got a group of, uh, of citizens in our county that um, uh, 
they're the Clinton County Concerned Bikers Association, and they're here to raise awareness for um, safety for bikers. And uh, I'll read this real quick, and then we'll ask if, uh, if there's a group uh, here today of our friends that uh, you'd like to come up. It says, uh, Certificate of Recognition from the Cleveland County Board of Commissioners presented to the Cleveland County Concerned Bikers Association for promoting motorcycle awareness in Cleveland County, for encouraging all road users to look around, check mirrors, and consciously look for motorcycles. Cleveland County Commissioners support Motorcycle Awareness Month in Cleveland County and commend you for your dedication to this issue. Presented the seventh day of May 2013 and signed by all the commissioners. Um, and if we can, we'd like to maybe step down and present this to, to the group. And if y'all want to come up and I want to get a picture. Point 
three acres and it's located on Ross Road off the of Stone Point Road. We have recommendations from the Planning Board and Ice Thermal Planning Commission. Both indicated that uh, they were recommended to approve the amendment. Uh, the planning consultant indicated that uh, uses in the vicinity are a mix of single family residential and vacant land, all of which are zoned residential. The area surrounding the intersection of Ross Road and Stony Point is a mix of residential, commercial, and institutional uses currently. Uh, the subject property contains a garage and storage buildings adjacent to Ross Road near the dead end. Given the size of the property, he does not uh, think that that would constitute spot zoning and considering the low density of the area, residential agricultural designation would be uh, acceptable and would be in uh, conformance with the land use plan. The planning board echoed those comments, uh, also saying that it would be uh, consistent with the land use plan. And they also felt like the amendment would be reasonable in the best interest of the public, which is one of their findings that they have to make and recommend in their recommendation to you. Uh, saying that this was a large tract of land and in close proximity to other properties on rural agricultural, which is just north of there, is our, our large RA district. I'd be glad to answer any questions. And uh, Petitioner, if you have any questions for me? I've mentioned any questions, uh, Mr. McCarter. Um, at this time, the public hearing open. Anyone in the audience who would like to speak for or against the uh, land use plan change, please come up to the mic, state your name and the address, and the um, description of how you feel about it. Anyone, want to speak, anyone wishing to speak for or against, please come up to the mic at this time. Public hearing closed. Commissioners, any questions or a motion? I make a motion that we move uh, the change with the recommendation of the planning board. A motion, Commissioner Hutchin, that the planning board change be approved. Okay. That's that. Ms. Holbrook, any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please raise your right hand. And now we go to our regular agenda, and it looks like Mr. McCarver is on the Take over our meeting. So, Bill, if you just want to take <coughs> time, we'll go back right to it. All right. The uh, next item is an amendment to our land use plan. And you don't see these very often, but uh, we have a recommendation or a request from James Knight in the upper part of the county to uh, create what we call a commercial node, and that's the red dots on our land use map. And they're typically found at intersections. Of uh, major roads, and this particular intersection is St. Paul's Church Road and Boyd Road. It's about halfway in, in between Kaiser and Bellwood. Um, the intersection is primarily mixed uses, uh, scrap metal business, truck repair shop, uh, vacant garage, and of course residential rural type uses. Um, Mr. Knipe has some plans for growing this particular area and would like to, to see this commercial area develop over the future. And in order for him to do that, he of course needs your blessing to amend the land use plan and then that will allow for future rezonings in that area also to commercial. But first we have to take this initial step to um, make the area a conditional or a commercial area on our land use plan. The question is just a comment, you know, uh, trying to create more business environment for being friendly. I think that the um, good suggestion that we do the approval of it that shows the public are you know, working for and working to getting areas available where they can expand and create businesses on their own areas. I very much like it. Uh, 
I mean, it's, it's great that someone's looking at expanding business and area. Um, it seems kind of a unusual place to put it. I mean, not on Main Road. But how would that affect the neighbors and the neighborhood there? Well, of course, you know, there could be a variety of commercial uses that uh, could be added to the area. This basically would, uh, would help um, with the businesses that are already there. Uh, if those we want to rezone those properties to make those properties conforming uh, to our ordinance, allow those existing businesses to expand, and that would this would also help that. But um, really, no effect that I can see on the existing uh, residential development. We're just changing the land use plan, and we would rather see changes to the land use plan come from the public rather than something that staff would recommend. They're, the people that live in these areas know more appropriately what, how they want their areas to develop rather than us applying something to them that they may or may not want. Just inside that red dot, is there any, any opposition or anybody that's not uh, aware? Any other questions, Commissioner? At this time, I have a motion to be approved or not. I'll make a motion that we approve it. Motion Second. Okay. I share uh, in the discussion. All in favor of the 2015 land use plan amount of please raise your right hand. Bill, I don't have no violation either way. I've got several of those for you tonight. Let's go. You just stand up there and we'll go The first one on the list is 1805 Isaac Place. <clears throat> And this is in the light oak area. <clears throat> Property owner is uh, Alan Sara, and it's, it's now been placed into a LLC. My oh God, Alan Sara was the property owner when we first began communicating with him, and uh, Andrew may <laughs> remember that name. <laughs> we have uh, we held a hearing in July and certain uh, ended up uh, never could contact the property owner by mail but ended up running legal ad uh, to satisfy the notice requirements in the Gaston paper lives in Gaston County and still no action uh, through the end of uh, 2012, and uh, the order actually expired in April of this year. Uh, still no action. And now we're bringing it to you to allow us to demolish the home and clean up the property. Inspected again in April, no change, and now we're coming to you 
in May to ask for authorization to demolish. October 11, 2012, and an order served after that to, to demolish the home. Uh, no action's been taken by the property owner, uh, property owners Larry Wilson and Rita Miller. And as you can tell, it's all grown up around it. It's been many, many years. It's actually partially burned, but you can't tell it from the picture. And, uh, they, uh, the, uh, these folks actually inherited the property and um, just don't have any funds to really take care of that particular situation. Um, the neighbors that live all around there are complaining and scared that the kids will get in and get hurt. So that's where the petition comes from. So we're asking you for permission to demolish this one. Questions? Here's my 
all in favor of the ordinance to demolish uh, 2183 Jim Pettison Road, please raise your right hand. Thank you. Mr. Carter, 729 Home Street. Back to light of it. This one is owned by Edwin and Pamela Harrell. Bill Inspector had some contact with uh, Mr. Harrell. In fact, this week, and he is interested in having the fire department burn this one down. Um, so, so we can we can help him with that. And hopefully, that that'll be of no cost to either of us. Issue any questions to Mr. Carter about this? I guess my question is, if he's interested in burning it down, do we need to proceed with the order or just assist him in burning it down? Or they can do it? Well, the order would give us the ability to do it later on in case he changes his mind. Okay. So that's it, I'll make a way to proceed with it. Second. Mr. Holbrook, uh, you have a question for Mr. Carter? Uh, I could have you vote on the Adoption order for 389 Hunter. Please raise your hand. Mr. McCarty. Carter, my time, I say. One more. Now, Drive uh, burned double wide. Property owner is. Uh, Glenn Bridges Powell and has been standing vacant for quite a while. The people's neighbors are starting to complain about that. Um, we've held hearings and served the orders, and um, she has been served with the notice, and she's just not able to um, get the work done. So we're asking you to allow us to do it. I guess my question is when you say that they can't afford to do it, and we do it, and we send it back, either they pay or put a lien on it. Mm -hmm. That was one of those things that you just not going to do it. It will pay either way. Yeah. No, okay. Any questions for Mr. Uh, I'll, I'll second 
it's I'll second that comment that uh, I think we need to follow it up as we do it and by the next meeting then we can work out the details on how it will be set up and how you operate it. Uh, the, the details of my club that actually that doesn't have to work for us. Uh, but his expertise in that area would be uh, a very much value to us. So at this time, if there are other names to be entered into this, uh, I would like to entertain a motion that uh, David Deer be named the interim county manager until such time as we can uh, name a manager. That's your motion. I'm sorry. I thought uh, you made a motion. I second. Did you? Uh, yes, I did. It's <laughs> I'm uh, I made a motion. I appreciate the motion. Seconded. Down. Discussion. Other than uh, uh, Mr. Falls, Mr. Holbrook, and Mr. Salmon have not worked with David that much. Uh, but, um, he is an individual of uh, only great talent. But, uh, he is an individual that is well respected in this county. And uh, I personally would appreciate you voting and supporting him and being our manager. <laughs> This time I'll call for a vote. All in favor, please raise your right hand. You, Ms. Milton, if you were form Mr. Deer, to get work. Does that mean I get fired? Not until he says so. All right, our next uh, discussion is actually uh, the advertisement uh, for the uh, county manager position. Uh, what I would like, with your permission, is that we name uh, Commissioner Susan Allen, uh, our county clerk, and David Deer, our interim manager, to not only advertise, uh, receive uh, the resumes, and also, also keep us informed of all that's going on. Uh, I think that with Susan's expertise in business, our county clerk's experience, they hear the knowledge of all of those who may apply to complete in North Carolina that um, we will allow that team to look at uh, all the resumes that come in and use every avenue that we have to advertise. Um, uh, again, before commission, I'd like to put that in form of motion. I'll second that. I'll second the vice chair. I've got some questions because my opinion of what a county commissioner should be might be entirely different from them. And I think since he's going to be hired by the majority of us, I think all the applications should be available. I have no problem with them going out and doing the advertisement, but I personally would like to review each resume that comes in because I have, for example, I've got as much business experience probably as any of the up here. I understand that, Mr. Yeah, I, 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 I first would like to be involved in myself. Uh, just a question. Um, my interpretation is that those three would end it up, but the applications, the resumes when they came in, would be over for any commissioner to yeah. review. Is that, is that correct? It's not going to be in conception. It's just going to be they're going to compile them and give us the information. Yeah, but we need we need to determine what are we looking for in a county commission before we start advertising. Um, don't we want to do we resume and look at it and yeah, uh, but, but still again, you know, like I say, even when we hired our last one from David, we put out specifics that we wanted did, and each one of them applied because you know, you know, if we want one that's uh Young, or we want one that's ready to retire, just like you said, or do we want one that's strong in economic development, or we want one that's strong in finance, or do we want one that's strong in HR. Just to say we want to advertise for the county manager, I think there needs to be some criteria set so we know what we're going to get and what we're looking for. John yeah. Allen, just between me and you and honest, I would yeah. say that resumes will speak, speak to all of those issues. And, uh, they, well, I, I, I just figured that, you know, if you got some. Uh, Criteria out there. Why take a bunch of resumes when you know you're not going to accept? I think one thing that we've got that we can kind of fall back on a little bit is 
uh, we went through this process two years ago, right. um, and we had a, 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 I think we all had a chance to review the advertisement that we put in before, and it was something that was a standard advertisement. I believe getting the, the widest, uh, widest range of, of applicants possible uh, to apply. We may be thinking one thing and then have somebody send a resume that, that maybe is a little bit outside the box that we're thinking of that may just you know, blow our socks off and be the right person for the job. So, uh, but I agree that once we get those resumes in hand and we get those applications in hand, each commissioner needs to have the opportunity to, to review those. And I think this, you know, rather than having uh, all of us on that team working on submitting the, the, uh, uh, the announcements and things like that, um, I think having um, three or four, I, I, I'm not sure I've had somebody else on that as well. What I've done, Johnny, is for us as a collective, as a group,
briefly, we've had two or three nice economic development projects uh, coming to the county in, in initial inquiry. Because they have not uh, gone through several steps yet. So the, the initial inquiries and visits have been very good. Uh, so we still have some movement. Uh, the economic development, uh, the elevation of tier two has affected us some in discussion with those people, but uh, things are still moving in, in a positive way. Kristen's doing a pretty good, an exceptional job. And one thing that, um, that we all have to be concerned about is fulfilling of the vacancy in that office also. Uh, we continue to work diligently and she does a job. Uh, there's Charlie Regional Partnership luncheon this Thursday and also, uh, no, I'm sorry, the 16th, which is Thursday week. This Thursday, of course, the prayer breakfast, the YMCA sponsors, which will be held up for the brand. Just a question. You said we've got a vacant bill on the economic development of the LA Yes, uh, I just mentioned that is something we need to remember. That's what we need to work to do that. Bill and I attended the last RPO, MPO meeting that you got done last week. Looked like the numbers as far as cost is not going to be like it was. I mean, it's going to be pretty comfortable if we stay with the MPOs, the RPOs. I think uh, one of the major questions is the voting system. If we go to the three county MPO, how that's going to stand. And from what I understand, the recommendation is to be by population. So if by population, each one of the counties basically has to own you to have one gap. The county has one, Lincoln has one, we have one. So the voting procedure would be more intact, closer than what it would be with the structure they got. So they're going to send it to their APC. We meet tomorrow. They meet tomorrow. We'll move forward recommendation on it. Yes, they will do the recommendation and whatever they choose to do, they choose not to go with the pre county deal, which they with the RPO. If they choose to go with it, then commission for those to go with it. So uh, actually, actually, we probably need some guidance tonight because they did ask for that. In the event that everything is comes out that we, we go with the three county board, with the planning board. Uh, I would add to, to refer to yours and Bill's expertise. So. Uh, I would just ask the commissioner to give you the bill to the party to make that decision. If I can feel second on that. Second. Second to the whole group. Any questions about discussions and the party to make a decision on our membership? If that's okay with everyone, if they raise your hand. I think it's going to be a big plus because, you know, we've got everything in Division 12. It's going to be easier for the DOT to do it, and it's going to be more compact. So it has to depend on what uh, Gaston County does tomorrow. We'll, we'll come back in front of you with uh, an MOU, uh, memorandum of understanding that yeah. our jurisdictions will sign to actually formally create that new system. Each jurisdiction will have to sign that. We'll bring that in front of you. Mr. Chairman, I just think we should, as the board, go on the record and say it's the fact that Commissioner Hutchins is the job he's done. Well, uh, Bill, Bill, Bill's been, been there with me, and uh, our late uh, county manager worked with us through this thing. And, uh, it hadn't been the easiest thing, but uh, we got through it. So, uh, basically, uh, from this board, we want to thank you and Bill that will work. We're looking for the paperwork. Sure. Uh, share. Well, along that same those same lines, I, I'd like to say thank you too. Uh, one of my main concerns, the whole um, ordeal that y'all are dealing with, was wanting to keep our county public and keep us all together. And this is the only way that that could have happened. And, and y'all y'all spent a lot of time, and a lot of effort. And I really appreciate. It. I got to visit with them at one of their meetings and, and could see them work uh, working. And they did a good job for us. Um, it's been a busy couple of weeks. Uh, I, along with the uh, commissioners, uh, went to the Nurse Family Partnership Community Celebration. Uh, that was a great event. Uh, we got to celebrate uh, 
uh, some really good things going on in our county. Uh, JCPC meeting uh, earlier today uh, uh, was uh, very insightful as far as what <clears throat> we've got our community partners doing to uh, work with young people in, in juvenile crime. So um, it, it's been a very busy week. Also, one other, one other just a quick note. Um, I, I'm sure you'll have it as well. Um, after the store put out some of our goals that we were, um, we looked at our goal workshop, uh, our goal setting workshop. Um, I got a lot of phone calls um, agreeing with a lot of the things that were said at that meeting. Uh, and it shows how in touch uh, y'all all are with, uh, with our community. So um, I appreciate those comments. Uh, just kind of an overview of uh, that kind of work that you really compile the uh, uh, goals that we said at the work session, email them to the commissioners, uh, think about which one you think is the most important to you. Uh, we'll wrap back at the next meeting, whether it's a short term or long term. Uh, then we can have some discussion of whether that's one of those goals that need to be funded and how we will go about that. Uh, and we can just get started in discussion. With your permission, I would also like uh, Ms. Melton to um, notify uh, Mr. Deere that we have approved him as interim. Uh, and um, I guess we haven't asked if he's going to accept it now. But uh, if you would notify Mr. Deere, uh, really, really, thankful for him stepping up to the plate. Um, he was a great manager. Uh, he served this county, not only as a financial officer and a manager, but all the people he worked with are still in place, so I think you will find that there will be a real smooth transition. Uh, I look forward to the work of Mr. Hutchins, Ms. Allen, Kerry, and David in getting this out into the correct publication so that we can get a quick response and a quick resolution to the manager's position. And uh, that's something else to say. Uh, I think it's really what I want to say is uh, thank you, Kerry. Thank you, April, for keeping me in line for a week. <laughs> and um, uh, Andre, thank you for you being here. I call her, I call her Bob Jr. now. <laughs> But uh, thank all of you. Thank you for all the work you've all done. And if I could have a motion to stand adjourned. Take a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Second. 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 Second.